On behalf of my family, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. It means a lot to us. I'd also like to thank all those that are watching online from around the world, especially those in Atlanta and New York, Florida, my cousins in England, and all of those where it all started in Barbados. Years ago, I wrote a song called Celebration of Life. And though I'm not going to sing it today, I do want to recite the words because they have special meaning and they kind of set up what this day is for us. This is a celebration of one who touched our lives and brought us all together. I'll make a dedication to the memory of his smile. We are all one big family. Because when we think of you, Dad, our mood begins to change. We feel your love filling us through and through. Your light that shines and the joy that you bring, we feel every time we think of you. This is a celebration of one who touched our lives. That is why we're here today, to make a dedication to the memory of your style. Because when we think of you, Dad, gray skies, they turn to blue, and the sun comes shining through. Your spirit soars, and the beauty that you are, we feel in this very room. This is a celebration. This is a celebration. This is a celebration of you. Because when we think of you, then we are not afraid to be our best each and every day. We are inspired to live extraordinary lives because of the strength that we found in you. Rest in peace, Dad. We'll see you on the other side. So I'm uh, Clyde Norma's youngest son, and I grew up on a street called Countryside. And then the next street is Defiance, and the street after that is Prosperity. And there was a time in my life that I was going through a lot, and not having a car, going through a lot, walking over to my parents' house, and I noticed that I was finding my own way, obviously. My dad and family gave me a really strong foundation. Um, my mom was the, the balance for some very, very uh, traumatizing time as a youth. But I know that I was able to grieve my father and I'm able to move very strong on the earth because I have an understanding of the darkness and the light, which my dad was both. So as I was walking, and moving into defiance, because you can't live through other, somebody else's energy. You have to find your own way, path, or maybe it's just a duality that you move through that. So I know that a lot of you saw my dad as perfect, and that's beautiful. <laughs> and I understand that Hitler's parents were probably perfect. <laughs> then he was upset that the rest of the world wasn't like that, and we all know what happened. So I learned peace, example of peace, but I also felt a lot of the, the, the trauma that was there for a lot of things that he was pushing through for all of us. Not just, not just, not just like everybody in this room and throughout the world. He, he is a Jackie Robinson. He's just not as known. And I would like to thank everybody for, for this beautiful opportunity, and this is a celebration of life. This, it was a beautiful life. He, he told me when, he was, when I was eight that he wasn't gonna live long, and he lived to 90. That's extreme bonus, so, so let's, let's enjoy this day. Thank you.
teacher, mentor, friend. Good morning. I am Edgar Canada, and I was an anesthesiology resident of Dr. Jones in the 1970s at the Naval Hospital San Diego. First, I would like to extend my condolences to the family and friends that are gathered here today. Second, I would like to thank the family for extending the honor and allowing me to share a few words and the opportunity to say a final goodbye. What do you call a man that trains you in the skills that are necessary for your lifelong career? Teacher. He trained me and many other residents and leave behind a legacy of those that he trained. What do you call a man that arranges for you to have fellowship training in your specialty at one of the best hospitals in the world for that training? Mentor. He made it possible for two doctors in my training class from the Naval Hospital San Diego to train in pediatric anesthesia at the Hospital of Sick Children in Toronto. He also made it possible for other doctors to train at other hospitals for specialized anesthesia training. What do you call a man who attended every significant meeting of the California Society of Anesthesiologists as I was progressing through the levels of leadership until I was president of the society? Friend. After I became president, I selected him to give the Leffingwell Lecture at the end of my presidential year. He thanked me for this honor, but the honor was mine. In the words of President Theodore Roosevelt from a passage known as The Man in the Arena, it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who actually in the arena, who faces marred by dust and sweat and blood, who arrives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there's no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who know great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who achievement and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while, doing, while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Clyde was truly the man in the arena through his deeds, actions, and accomplishment throughout his life. Teacher, mentor, friend. He was all those things to me and to many of you that are here today because he was the man in the arena. My name is uh, David James. I was not a uh, lifelong friend of Clyde and have little knowledge of the formidable events that shaped his remarkable life. I first met Clyde in 1967 and have since then considered myself one of his many friends. In the ensuing 53 years, to borrow a phrase from my favorite author, we stole some horses together. <laughs> Today we honor Clyde. It seems appropriate to contemplate what made Clyde such a special person. It seems to me that Clyde truly appreciated life, capital letters, at his fullest. And the opportunity it presented to enhance the enjoyment as manifested by his many professional and personal accomplishments that are well known to all. Clyde had very firm beliefs concerning his faith as well as his moral and ethical standards. He was gifted with a unique ability to see his fellow members of the human race 
as individuals entitled to their own beliefs and thoughts, providing they do no harm. I miss Clyde, but our friendship will continue. That friendship has made me a better person. I think Clyde would feel good about that. Arthur Flippin. Oh. In the name of the Father, and of the oh. Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Good morning. I'm sorry for the delay in getting up here. My name is Dr. Arthur Flippen. I had the pleasure of working with Clyde, having Clyde as a colleague, a friend, uh, and a confidant in his 17 years with the Southern California Permanente Medical Group, that's Kaiser Permanente here in San Diego. The, all the speakers before me have taken every line that I was going to use. <laughs> um, but one, one thing I think, one thing I, thought did, one thing I thought about they did not touch. There is, or was, a Cape Verdean jazz pianist, Horace Silver, who has a famous song called Song for My Father. I will there's a ver there is a, a vocal uh, rendition of it, and if I remember correctly, I will, I will paraphrase it. It goes, there, were ne there was never a man so gracious and good as Clyde. A human being so good, he lived like a king because he knew the true treasures of life. I think that describes Clyde. This man was a scholar. He was spiritual. He was confident. He was competent. He, at Kaiser, when, during his time there, he probably admitted, administered, administered anesthesia to almost all the physicians or some member of their family during his time. He was the physician's anesthesiologist. I know that I have a wife and two children, and I think he admitted an anesthesia to at least three of them. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened to me. <laughs> but I want to thank uh, Nora and your sons and all of the Jones family for the opportunity to share him with you. He was a very special human being. And I know there are many here in the audience who could get up and go on forever, talking about their experiences, and, but I think all of them will be ones that emphasize how good a person he was. And that's reflected in all of you. Thank you. <laughs> 